Hello, and welcome to the Days of Eeyore. Today we're speaking about John Wallace, a local man who was uh, among the foremost leaders of the labor movement here in Nelson and also in the province of New Brunswick. So today my sources come from the Union Advocate, but also from a book uh, of poems that was compiled by the Wallace family. So let's begin with a little bit of context on uh, John Wallace's ancestry. So John Wallace's great-great-grandfather came from Wexford and it's thought, according to uh, family tradition, that he was suspected as a rebel and that his house had been burned by the British authorities. Uh, he may have been a part of the Wexford Rebellion of 1798, uh, which was part of the Society of United Irishmen's Rising that same year. Uh, it went from the 27th of May, 1798, until the 21st of June. And it was the most successful and most destructive of, of all the uprisings in that year of 1798. So, perhaps he was involved in this, perhaps that explains why his house was burned, or at the very least he was suspected of being a part of uh, this rebellion, and as I say, that may explain why his house was burned. Um, but he did come and he settled in Nelson, and he was offered uh, a different plot of land um, in exchange for a barrel of flour but he refused because of uh, its, this new plot of land's uh, inability to access timber. He would eventually move to uh, what we would know today as Nellonville, back the Wallace Road, uh, where John Wallace himself came to live in time. Uh, John Wallace's grandmother sang the first high mass ever celebrated in Nelson. Uh, his grandfather was the first school teacher in the community um, before the, the Monaghan School had even been developed. Uh, John Wallace's grandfather would travel from home to home um, as a kind of a roving instructor in the community. He, uh, to his credit, did not forget his roots and crossed the Atlantic 14 times in traveling between uh, here in New Brunswick and Ireland. So quite an achievement in those days uh, to travel 14 times to Ireland. I've only been, I think, three times, so <laughs> that's it. I've still got quite a few, quite a ways to go. Um, so, the interestingly, to kind of uh, take a step back again to uh, John Wallace's grandmother, the Wallace family had a really interesting relationship uh, with St. Patrick's Church. Um, they were the family who were in charge of making uh, and, I guess, producing the, the communion bread. Uh, so they would make the bread and they had, they had special uh, tools that would allow them to cut out uh, the communion wafers. There's, uh, these, I think, actually can be seen at the St. Michael's Museum in Chatham. Uh, so again, uh, they were chosen as a family and uh, for a number of generations, that's, that was their role in the parish community uh, the preparation of the communion bread. So on October the 30th, uh, 1899, in Johnny Wallace married uh, Mary Oates of Newcastle. Uh, John Wallace at that time, him would have been 31 years old. Uh, so ooh, John Wallace was known in the community uh, and in the province as an advocate for uh, the working man. Um, he was active in parish offices as here in the parish of Nelson and um, as I say I wrote quite frequently in the newspaper. In 1920 he, uh, he wrote that the prosperity of a, uh, of a country could not be measured by its wealth and he felt that laborers should not be satisfied, either with long hours of toil, poor food, and the meanest form of shelter, while others, mostly their employers, were living a quite higher standard, to a quite higher standard. Uh, he felt organization, intelligently directed, was necessary for all working men, and it was the only way to, better, to gain better conditions uh, for laborers. 
1921, he presided over a meeting in, of working men here in Nelson at the Labor Hall. Other speakers included the independent MLA John S. Martin, who was an important part of the promotion of industrial workers' needs here in Miramichi, and was the second vice president of the New Brunswick Federation of Labor. So, um, interestingly enough, four years later, John Wallace himself became a third vice president of the, uh, of the New Brunswick Federation of Labor and became a district vice president here in Nelson. Uh, in 1931, and he attended the, the Congress of the New Brunswick Federation of Labor uh, began to deal with the, the issues posed by the Great Depression and on uh, the economic future of working men and women here in New Brunswick. Uh, he, in 1937, he addressed the Northumberland County Farmer Labor Union, uh, which had been newly founded and was established uh, here in Nelson, as a matter of fact, and felt, and I quote, government of the people and for the people, rather than government of the privileged few for the privileged few. It was around this time that John Wallace took his now famous walk uh, from Miramichi to Fredericton to present a brief to the legislature on the need for compensation for injured workers. So uh, again, I mean, you can see it's quite a long distance uh, hundreds of kilometers there's, to walk from Miramichi uh, to Fredericton, but it was a symbolic gesture, and it was a very important one uh, uh, for labor advocacy. So um, John Wallace's final years there's, uh, were, there's seen, were characterized by great fear in the community because he was living um, in kind of the more remote parts of Nallonville. He was living there by himself of, and on the so-called back lots of Nallonville. Uh, and it was said that the men of the community came together under the direction of Albert Vickers and built John Wallace a new home um, on the land owned by his daughter and his son-in-law uh, uh, in Nallonville, and he relocated there and died in 1953. Something that John Wallace was also very much known for uh, was his poetry capturing the community as he found it, and a number of notable events, uh, probably most notably the rebuilding of St. Patrick's Church, quite a lengthy poem that he wrote about the history of that structure. But I'm going to, I'm going to close today uh, with a smaller poem uh, written about uh, the International Labor Association here in, uh, here in Miramichi. The ILA is here to stay is growing stronger every day. The Union Hall we built this fall, a credit to the ILA. Don't forget to pay your dues and not to raise a holler, for the ILA has raised your pay by more than half a dollar. There was a time when a single dime was the highest rate in pay. This time has passed, it could not last. For men of pluck, they had good luck and joined the ILA. I made this rhyme in idle times and have little more to say. Whatever you do, be always true to the good old ILA. So I think we'll leave it there. John Wallace, an interesting individual oh, uh, from the pantheon of Nelson's characters. We hope to bring you more stories of the unique individuals that lived in this community and on Bull Bears Island in future episodes. Next week, my colleague Ken Walker will be back with another very interesting and engaging edition of The Living Island. And of course he and I, he would both uh, welcome you to come and visit us here or on the island and in the community when and if you're able uh, once the season starts in May. And uh, of course both of us strongly encourage you to like this video, subscribe to the channel, oh, and if you're able, oh, please look in the details of the video below oh, and maybe support us on Patreon. So uh, with all that said, I guess we'll close out for the days of yore. I have been Dr. Sean McCarthy. Once again, I very much enjoyed the time that we spent together and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. <laughs>